What gives? There we go. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. Jake the Garden Todger, which is my nickname for Jake the Garden Snake. I actually might call him Jake the Massive Todger because I actually do really like what he did in his video. Yeah, he gave me a shout out, all that jazz, not bothered about that. What I'm more bothered about is uh, the question that he asked. Why do some of these bikes that have race engines or very close to race engines have such ridiculous service intervals? One thing about this bike that's a bit concerning is the maintenance schedule. It's incredibly intense. The oil changes alone are every 300 miles, according to the manual. First thing I need to do is warm this thing up. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong. I can draw some conclusions as to why certain engines may have shorter lifespans than others. Jake did the video. I suggest you go and go watch it. There'll be a, I don't know how you do links anymore. It's all changed. <laughs> so, why do these bikes, like the bike he's got, does it have such ridiculous service interval? The service interval on that bike is after every five minutes you have to do an oil change. It might as well be with how ridiculous it is. And Jake was asking, is it all these reasons? Like, is it because the engine's highly strung? Is it blah, 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 blah? This is about engineering, but about a part of engineering that most people don't talk about. And I will end up writing stuff on the board. Um, so this is about three things. This is about confidence, testing, and money. All right. So which one should I start with? Let's start with confidence. Ooh, I put one too many dots. Confidence, what the hell am I talking about? So this engine was designed for racing and racing have a criteria where they say, well, okay, um, how long is a race? So let's just say race plus bits, like maybe just a run through warm ups, etc., etc. maybe a heater. So let's just say that this is five hours of running. So they say, okay, then five hours of running and how often do we change this engine? I'm not going to go to any specified rules because there are rules for championships in America, in Europe, in individual countries in Europe, in Japan, in Australia. We'll just ignore them. We'll just ignore this. This is more of a conceptual thing than anything else. Let's just say it's five hours. And let's just say you can rebuild your engine every single race, right? Or you just slam a new engine in, so let's go with this puppy. <coughs> so if that's the case, they turn around and say, well, we have this thing in engineering called an FOS, right? And this is a factor of safety. Now for most engine parts, for engine parts, the FOS is between five and 10. Now what does this mean? A factor of safety is like saying this cable that suspends this bridge or this winch or whatever, this can suspend, uh, just say, I'll just do easy numbers, 10 tons, it snapped at 10 tons. Okay then, so if we want a factor of safety, um, just say of five or 10 or something like that, it needs to be five times more than what's required. So just say if you could lift 10 tons, let's just say if we have a cable that snaps and fails at 10 tons, let's just say we will have it lift maximum of a ton. Right? You might have seen it says in a lift can carry the maximum of 16 people. Well, the factor of safety on them brakes um, and the cables and stuff are, are probably 10, right? Because it's in the public sector, because it's used by Joe Average and because of liability and insurance and stuff, they'll have a factor of safety of 10. In other words, it's 10 times stronger than it needs to be, right? Which makes sense. So with your bike or cars and all the rest of it for us lot, plebs, factor of safety is between five and 10 for engine parts. It depends what it is. And it's up to the manufacturer. If you eat into this, you can get higher performance. So that's that, right? And this is from doing uh, cross-sectional analysis, etc., cetera, et cetera. Right. generally for the strength of things and generally in tension because tension's the weakest one. So putting all that gobbledygook engineering nonsense to one side for a minute, this is what you have to live with, right? This is what happens to a normal engine. Now race engines usually eat into this. A race engine, a race engine. And what I mean by that is a purpose built and designed race engine, not you who does amateur racing who goes, I've got a race bike. It's not that, <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to be sure. A race engine can have an SOF between three and five because if you eat into the factor of safety, in other words, if you get a conrod 
and you make it X, you know, so thick, it's got a cross section, just say it's got an I-beam cross section of like that, right? Built into that is the factor of safety. We've made it beefier than it, it requ is required to be. But with racing, we want to go, that's how they go lighter, right? That's how they go to them extremes, is what they do is they say, well, this is our power output, this is the load we're going to put on it for X amount of time. If our fatigue limit's all the way over here, we'll just, we'll eat into the factor of safety, bring it down so we can get things lighter, higher performance, right? If you had a fact, if you basically, if it was just strong enough, any jerk or anything or whatever, or any impurities in the material, any micro fractures, all this kind of stuff will cause it to fail. It doesn't mean it will, it means it's very close to the line, right? We don't want to be there because anything can happen. It's not worth the championship just to get that extra 3% horsepower or something. So race engines have this factor of safety. Now, when we get back to these hours, we go, well, okay then. If, we, if a race is going to be five, let's test our engine. And this is where it's important. Let's test our engine, just say, to 100 hours. Let's test our engine to 100 hours. That's way above what it needs to survive. Did it survive? Eight out of 10 times, 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of jazz. They also look at the type of failure as well. But the fact of the matter is, that's what they base these things on, right? Is that they say, right, this specific engine we've tested to this degree, that is it. This is where the confidence comes in, because we've done what we needed to do. We've, 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 we've designed this within the realms that it's meant to be in. Great, fantastic. That's one thing. That's the confidence. Then it's the testing, right? The second thing, is testing. Testing, I don't need to write anything down. It costs a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money to test something properly, right? We're not talking about, I started it and it ran for 15 seconds, or I ragged it up that hill once, it's fine. Testing costs a lot of money, right? Because usually what you have to have is you have to have a team of engineers, they have to make a test rig, they have to run a sample size, so not one, a hundred minimum, or a thousand minimum. Now when you're making a bike that's going to have, you know, we're talking about engines, not bikes themselves, because many en many bikes share the same engine. Your engine, you may make a million of. If you're Honda and you're making the Cub 90 engine, you've made, God knows, 200 million of them. Whatever. You'll be, it, your numbers will be in the millions. So testing a thousand isn't that expensive. Testing 10,000 isn't too expensive. Because you've got to remember, it, when we say testing, we mean we've got an engine, we've got to run it, fuel it, do all the oil changes, and then every single time we stop at a milestone, so 100 hours, 250 hours, 500 hours, you pick where you want to stop, but when you do, the oil needs to be tested, the rings need to be taken, sent off to a lab to be tested. All of these things need to be tested, but non-destructively as well. So we need to do spectrographs, we have to do uh, x-ray, topography, blah, blah, blah. All this kind of stuff, right? SEM stuff, stick it in a giant microscope. All of this kind of jazz. And you've got the tribology experts who look at the web, characteristics. You've got to collect all, and these people cost a lot of money. And you've got to collect up all of this stuff. Then you get all the bits back that have to be traceable. You have to put them all back in the engine, build it all to spec, have it inspected, then carry on the tech. Not one engine with a hundred, right? And if you're going to sell 5,000 units, it's not worth it. It's, if you're going to sell 5,000 of these race engine one-off two-stroke, four-stroke, whatever bikes, these dirt bikes, that are these one-off. No one is going to pay for that. No one is going to pay for that, which is the last bit, which is the money side of it, right? Let's, I'm put, I'm, every time I do it, I do more dots. So let's just say the confidence is the engineering bit. But you've got to remember, that engineering bit has been done. This was done in the design because the engine was designed to do race plus bits. <laughs> so that bit's been paid for and done. The testing isn't free, and that's where it comes down to money. Who is going to justify that? It's not just resources. So you could think of this as a resource, right? The testing resources. But it all comes down to this. You've got two options. You're Mr. Yamaha or Mr. Triumph or whoever, and you're in charge of this project. And this project is, we're gonna get this one-off bike and we're gonna stick this one-off engine in it and we're gonna sell it to 5,000 Muppets. What I mean is that's the way they see it, is that you're not racing, you don't actually need a bike like this. Now, I'm all good if you want to spend the money and you want to pay for the service intervals and you want to race around a bike like that, you knock yourself out. The way they see it is that we're not trying to sell this to the masses, right? It is, these are small limited edition runs because they know that some people are just obsessed and will pay, right? 
They've already paid the money, and this is where the other side of the money comes in. They've already paid for all this. Imagine if they could sell some unit to recoup some of this money. Like, for instance, you imagine if they did, you imagine three years after a MotoGP was held, so 2025, you imagine in three years' time, in 2028, they are selling a limited run of a 100 MotoGP build bike. People are going to buy them, right? People would buy them. The fact of the matter is, is the reason why they don't do it is because they cost so much. And maybe one, well, actually, you know, the bikes are dying. Everything's dying with engines and stuff. It'll all be electric. But you've got to pay for all this. Or, and this is the thing, imagine you're Mr. Yamaha or whoever in charge of this entire project. You can do one or two things. You can either say, we're going to spend money on all of this testing, taking up all of these resources, which will amount in the millions, probably, or we can put in your service manual what we already know. Well, we know it lasts 100 hours. Just follow them. And that's where it comes back around to confidence. Well, we're confident that these numbers are good. We've tested, and there's testing again. We've tested to these this amount of hours, or whatever the specs are. We've tested it to these specs. That gives us the confidence because we don't want to spend the money on all of this test. See how it's this weird triangle it's almost a bit like recalls whereas how much is it worth if we how much is it going to cost the recall versus how much people can sue us and how much trouble we can get in <laughs> you see what i mean so if they have a defective wing mirror or if they have a defective cd player how much trouble are we going to get into in for that well nothing so the law side of it's not a problem how much is the recalls it's going to cost us 26 million oh forget that then Fuck that. And it, or brakes. These brakes are literally setting themselves on fire when you dab them lightly. It, if the temperature is above 25 degrees C. Oh my God. How much trouble that's going to get in is into, oh, people will die and they'll sue. <laughs> How much is a recall? Well, the recall is going to cost 50 million. How much can people sue? 200 million. Do the recall. It's kind of like that. Not, I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying that there's this triangle of um, how much it's going to cost us, how much testing resources in money and resources physically, how much confidence do we have in the test. And it all comes down to we either get you, the consumer, to follow what we know with confidence through testing work, or we spend millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and find out how long the engine can actually last. And it might be 180 hours. Who knows? The fact of the matter is, is no one has actually found out, right? No one has found out. If you rag this engine like you could rag a bike at a road bike engine, just generally riding around, you know, you're not going full chat for 24 hours. How much is it going to cost them? So there's been a lot of comments about, oh, it's the wear, it's the friction, it's the pressure, it's the BMEP, it's the, it's all of this jazz. It's got nothing to do with that. This is a massive part of engineering that no one talks about. Like, and what I mean by no, no one talks about is in the circles of all of the people who are interested in engineering, they don't ever think about what all those bloody meetings are about when you sit down with a notepad and just write notes of, you know, just stuff like our uh, yield, our costs, our tooling costs, our this, that, all of these things that go into all this planning, all of these things, it's just a, it's just, it's a cost analysis on what it would cost to do something like this versus what the benefits are. And for such a small run of engines, they don't care. It, it's not worth the money. So they choose this. They just say, do what the original testing shows. Apart from that, we've got nothing for you. Now, the last question might be, well, is it okay then to run these kind of things for longer than these surface intervals? That is entirely up to you. How much do you, how much confidence do you have in your lack of testing? Because if you get it wrong, it's going to cost you loads of money. Not this, but it's going to cost you loads of money. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.